Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. My name is Noah Ruiz. Joining me every Wednesday is my brother Pedro. Good morning, everybody. I'm Pedro Rice, Creative Tech here at Adafruit. And every week, we're here to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit and coffee. Uh, and this coffee. is the show where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects. Hello, everybody in the chat room hanging out with us this morning. Mm -hmm. It is episode 437. It is April 10th, 2024. Welcome, everybody, to the show. If you'd like to join us throughout the show, you can drop comments in any of the social networks. But we are hanging out in the live broadcast chat channel. That's a damn fine cup of coffee. <laughs> That's my Dale Cooper from Twin Peaks impression. which I just finished watching season one, two, and three. <laughs> um, yeah, crazy stuff. Good morning, everybody. We'll give you some shout outs to folks hanging out. We have Duester, Rosin, DJ Devin3. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We have uh, lots of prototyping projects to share. We have some community makes and a time lapse. All right, uh, mm -hmm. let's kick it in to gear with adafruit.com slash free. Find out all the deals that are happening this week at adafruit.com. We'll start off with the orders that are $99 or more. Folks that order that much will get a free PCB coaster with a golden Adafruit logo automatically added to your cart. If your order is $149 or more, you get the free PCB coaster plus a free Adafruit KB2040. That's that lovely dev board featuring the RP2040 chip, STEM QT port, and lots of fun GPIO. If your order is $199 or more, you'll get the KB2040, the PCB coaster, and free UPS ground shipping for continental US only. And if your order is a whopping $299 or more, you'll get the free shipping, the KB2040, the PCB coaster, and a free circuit playground express. All of these items, these goodies, get automatically added to your cart at checkout. So no need to add coupons. While supplies last, adafruit.com slash free for the details. And on top of that, we're gonna give you a 10% off discount code for your total order. Today's coupon code is PICODVI. PICODV. Pedro, what's going on? <laughs> Putting in all of the links. Okay, I just got the links for you. Uh, Vince is also hanging out. Good morning, Vince. Uh, we're streaming on all the channels, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitch, and Oops. X. X marks the spot. Cool. All right. I'm caught up. I think I got all those in there. We stuck about the newsletter, um, but I'll just put the link in there. <laughs> Adafruit.com slash newsletter, I think. Yeah, I got it to uh, subscribe to any type of newsletters. We have tons of them. Um, new products newsletter, CircuitPython newsletter, or is that part Python on hardware? Mm -hmm. AdrianDaily.com, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, we used to have a whole like elaborate intro. Now we just kind of wing it, which I'm fine mm -hmm. with. I used to have a thing for it. Here it is, newsletter, <clears throat> new, new, new news. But or whatever, really. Should probably update that. Huh? <laughs> That's like the winter edition. You can see everybody's has like yeah, a yeah. scarf and winter. <laughs> it should probably update that. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have a lot of time to kill because we don't really have a learn guide or a video today because we are in the middle of it. But Pedro, you've been working on this with Liz. Yes. Yeah. Why? Yeah, awesome code over to me in the afternoon, and it is a DVI monitor for two uh, different sensor nodes. Yo, check so, out your monitor. <laughs> whoa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me switch over to where am I? Yeah. Not Which one do you want to show? The settings for my, um, what is it called? Where it crops out the monitor. Yeah. It's uh, it's like a. It never. Micro, the, the aspect ratio is like a little off. Let me see. Do you want me to chat while you uh, fix that? There you go. All right. So this is a Pico DVI with the Pi, the Raspberry Pi 
W, so it's a Wi-Fi dev board, and it is pulling data from Adafruit I.O. It's pulling data from a couple of different sensor nodes that you have throughout your house. You have one on, uh, you have a temperature sensor for the for your pool, so you can see uh, the, the data that's coming into the pool. You got a humidity sensor. Uh, you have battery monitor for that sensor, and you have the air quality sensor. And these are all different things that are all pulling in from Adafruit IO, and you're displaying these icons and the text through Pico DVI output. So this is an HDMI display, and it just plugs in via HDMI, and you got this really cool display with uh, color graphics and stuff. You got, let me feature that again. Let me go full screen on, excuse me on that. So this is super cool. You ha we have this HDMI display in the Adafruit shop. It's got HDMI, VGA, <laughs> S-Video, and all these ports. But what's cool about it is you, you've made uh, a 3D printed bracket to house the PiCal Doubler Proto. So it has the Pico, the Raspberry Pi Pico W, that's the Wi-Fi dev board, and the Pico DVI Cowbell. So that gives you D DVI output. And you got this really nice VIS amount. Get the thumbs up there. You get this nice VIS mount on the back that you can attach the plate to. And you have all you have this is a, like kind of like an all in one unit mm -hmm. that has very clean wiring. You're able to power the 12 volts from a, a five volt USB battery using this uh, this little uh, boost USB boost converter, which we sell. We sell in the shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah everything we sell in the shop here. Uh, you have some ultra slim uh, HDMI cables, as you can see. They're like these super slim and short ribbon cables. So it's just such a clean um, unit here, and you're powering the the Pi Cow W with the with the USB port on the monitor. That's awesome. Everything's just so self-contained. Like it's all portable right there. So it's really cool. <clears throat> yeah. So when we were when we were talking about making this project, we didn't really see the bigger picture because we were thinking, you know, attaching it to a giant HDMI display. But when it's all into one little integrated little package like this with all of the connections. It makes so much sense to have one dedicated unit to just display what all of the other sensor nodes are displaying and just combining it into one little dashboard. Um, and the cool thing about it is I was showing off the dashboard that we, the web version of the dashboard. I have to sit there and hit like the reload button. Like some of this info doesn't update as fast as the HDMI cowbell one does. So I don't have to sit there and refresh. I don't have to, um, uh, have a different tab open on my computer. This is right. just a dedicated uh, viewport for all of the uh, all of those sensors. Yeah, yeah. The dashboard's great, but like you said, you're using your computer and the uh, the DVI Pico interface is custom. It's completely customized. You're getting the only the data that you want. Um, you can you can uh, use whatever graphics, whatever color with the Pico DVI output. Um, this is an Arduino project, uh, just because CircuitPython, um, the memory isn't really there, the performance isn't there for for P, uh, for DVI output with the Pico W. Um, but um, shout out to Brent, he recently added Adafruit I/O support for the hardware for the Raspberry Pi Pico W, so you can now use that with Adafruit I/O. Um, what else am I missing? I think that's the main highlights there. Why these views aren't switching the way I want them to? <laughs> you gotta drag and drop the. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. It's you doing. drag it over there. <laughs> View over here. There you go. Yeah, is that is that fair? It's or we can do the three here. Small. You want that one to be big? Let's yeah, do that. Go. Okay. Okay, so we're building off of last week's project, which was the DVI. No, was it last week? Two weeks ago? I don't remember now. Uh, I think it was last week. So we're building off of the <laughs> Lego DVI doubler project and yes. got rid of the Lego, uh, was able to use the geometry from the doubler to incorporate that into the little Vista mount here with the plate on the top. This is mm -hmm. compatible with Stemma uh, boards. So if you want to add additional sensors right on the back of the display, you can definitely do that as well. You do have access to your Stemma connectors on the side here. 
And then these vents are the perfect size for stacking those onto there with some uh, M25 standoffs. So you have additional mounting on this guy as well. And the, uh, we're using all of our DIY um, HDMI to DVI converters here. So we have like a right angled one right here so that it has this, the cable going down and okay. behind the board so you can neatly have all your cables arranged. And then like you were saying before, the booster, uh, super handy because I uh, having to have the, the power going in through a barrel jack into the wall ward, a uh, little bit of pain. A lot of our outlets now have the USB ports right on there along with the uh, outlets like the splitters. So you're able to um, uh, just plug that directly into a USB uh, outlet now. So that's a lot easier than having two different wires coming in just for the power. Uh, I searched all through our uh, what we have in stock in the Adafruit store. And this is the only monitor that has the USB powered uh, connection on there. All the other ones like did away with it, which uh, that kind of stinks, huh? <laughs> we have to have something powered like that. This is yeah. The way to go. <laughs> yeah, and then good. you have all your legacy ones, like you were saying, the VGA, the RCA, or the composite video. I'm sure we're going to play with that again when we have the uh, retro floppy projects again. Yeah. So it's a seven seven inch HDMI display. Mm -hmm. Is it seven inch? I think it's seven. Oh man, I can't search the for it now. The ID is I just ordered another one because this one is like eleven years old. <laughs> we first started at Adafruit. I forget what project we did with it. Oh, that was the Xbox um display like mounted right. on the top of the Xbox controller. Yeah, yeah, I'm struggling to find it. I think it's this one here. I think I just found it. Here it is. No, 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 no. Come on. There she is. That's the layout I'd like. So it's a 7-inch display, 1280 by 800. Um, this amount on the back Yes. comes with a... Um, hardware we cr we did 3d printed our own to make it low profile yeah, I don't know what happened to the orange we probably threw it out or something <laughs> i don't know um but you have you know on board uh menus for con you know contrast and color and tint and sharpness and all that stuff it has uh, a originally it was really good for the raspberry pi but hey the raspberry pi pico is what we're using mm -hmm. um it's 9 to 12 volts to power it which is yes. why you're, you're using that um 12 volt, 12 volt um, booster cable um, but yeah, it's a pretty good display. HDMI right on there. A full size HDMI, by the way, not the little dingy one. And then, of course, the USB uh, 5 volt 1 amp, I th I'm thinking. Uh, it doesn't list it here, but I'm looking for the uh, any tech info on the USB port. But it's powering, um, you know, the, the Pico, which is 5 volts. Oh, cool. Oh, it's it's for a USB stick. So if you have MP3s and photos, remember yeah, TV yeah. You used to have that? You can like play uh -huh. video off of it. That's I didn't think it would work because that's what it's labeled as. I didn't know if there was any actual power going to it, but to my surprise, oh, yeah. yeah, it was great. Yeah, I mean, it simplifies the cabling. Yeah, it does. So that's the uh, that's the display. We're a big fan of it. You just got yourself another one, mm -hmm. so that's good. But uh, the the thing with this is it's Pico DVI. Any display is going to work with it anything, if it's a bigger yeah. display the resolution will just scale up to it hopefully mm -hmm. um the pico dvi only outputs uh oh boy what was it let me go to the pico dvi um thing here i have it right here switch over to it there it is there's the pico dvi cowbell and you can see we're using that same display in the hero shots here the product Mm -hmm. It's a nice display to do that. Um, but, you know, we, we haven't really done many I.O. We haven't done any I.O. projects with the DVI output. So this is kind of the first of its class. Um, let's see. The okay, top resolution, 800 by 400 is the top resolution. 16-bit um, pixel uh, frame buffer. Um, dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Yeah, here's the note about CircuitPython. It uses a lot of memory. Uh, so if you want to yeah. use PWD support, you'll likely be able to get away with Yes, yeah, so much memory that we didn't think this was going to work. 
it like, wasn't working. Got it to yeah. 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 So uh yay, it's working. First of its class. Let me switch over. Again, I not it's uh, again like when you're first starting it's uh I didn't think it was gonna be such a cool project, but man, this is so cool to have yeah. all those feeds being in the one dedicated display that you can pretty much plug into any TV for like a waiting room, like in an office is like the main setting that I think this is gonna be so good for. Um, yeah, I think a makerspace too. If you got a woodworking or a metal shop, you want to know what the is is the air okay? Yeah, and, yeah. Or do our laser the filters need to be changed out? Exactly. Do our laser yeah. cutters like this is good for that kind of shop use where you just have this like, any of, like CO two or carbon monoxide or something like sure. that. Yeah. The mowers were going by, and I was able to look at this and go, "Oh, the a AQI is only one. I thought it would be a lot higher because you know the gas with the air leaf blowers uh, and the yeah." The mower is going around, but no, it was only like at one. Uh, there's nobody outside right now. Uh, there's like no mowers, no no action going on outside. And I could well, see the neighbors are smoking cigarettes. <laughs> oh, yeah, it. it's like, whoa, what's going on today? That didn't happen yesterday with all that commotion. So I'm going to stay indoors. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. And then it's the battery. It's not that big. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then the uh, battery is uh, nice to be able to know because it is uh, the one that's monitoring the pool temperature it is just on a battery and a 6600 milliamp hour so it's uh, good to see when i uh, need to change that out and then you can get the uh, io triggers too once it gets to like i don't know 10 percent or something like that so you can have mm -hmm. some time to change you it out email. yeah you get an email when the battery's low if you wanted to set that up um, but again it's really great. You're, you're pulling in data from two different nodes two different With microcontrollers that are wi-fi micro enabled and they have different temperature sensors uh, humidity sensors. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to mention it's two different devices with what four different feeds. <laughs> right. We're combining here, which is, mm -hmm. we've not done that before. It's so cool. Yep. Again, we can do it with the dashboard, but then, you know, I'm taking up a tab, I'm using a computer, I'm using my phone. This literally you know, plugs in anywhere. Yep. All right. Let's take a look at uh, Discord real quick. We have some questions here. Uh, Brant is in the house. Hello, Brant. Yay. He is. There's a new YouTube layout, apparently. And Brant yeah, is asking, why are you using a new camera? Can you talk about that massive TV? Yeah, now? it's the. Yeah, your TV is just like your it. monitor. Yeah, it's like an old monitor. The, ca the um, uh, camera, though, if I can point it all the way over. Yeah, it's just the black magic one. It's what I used to use for the videos. So I'm just yeah. repurposing it. Switched over to using that Fuji XS20 for all the videos. Yeah, so you do 6K, real cool yeah. capture. Uh, yeah, so the black magic pocket cinema camera is like kind of old now. It's like maybe four or yeah. five years old. Uh, maybe the reason I was shooting at 6K and cropping to like a 4K aspect is for TikTok or all the, the portrait videos. Because then yeah. I can rearrange all of my um, shots okay. um, without losing any resolution. You just pan around and crop to the canvas size that I need to output to. Yeah. Uh, just as a equipment, you're using a MacBook Pro to power your setup right now. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. It's just a yeah, MacBook yeah. here. OK, uh, cool. So you're, you're literally the laptop turns into I'm using an iMac M1 for my setup. This is one display. It's all in one. That's that's my setup. Uh, the webcam is built into the iMac, so that's my setup. Um, just a quick. We haven't really talked about our um, our setups in a while, but uh, yeah. uh, you know, mics are these. We both have the same Blue Yeti mic, I think. That's yeah, USB. This guy. You got your mic there. I got mine here. You can see it's off of the camera. Um, for overhead shots, we still like to use our iPhones via the cam studio software mm -hmm. and that's pretty much it so that's our whole setup you got any other questions you can let us know all right um not enjoying the new youtube layout says rosin i haven't yeah, seen I, to be honest. when you go to your i think it's the home page not the not the subscriber but the home page like you used to be able to have the video autoplay without having like the, the audio going mm. and now you can't do that <laughs> Hmm, interesting. Because the, the trick to that was if you do it that way, 
you could turn on the audio and then get no ads <laughs> if it just if you just let the video autoplay. But now you can't do that anymore. And that's how I was watching all of my YouTube videos <laughs> with uh, no ads. <laughs> that's fun. All right, we got a question from D DJ Devin or just some comments. Uh, you can create graphics on the display using display I.O. layout, Cartesian yes. graph, using it with this bit, Fitbit project. You can replicate Adafruit I.O. GUI locally with the Pico DBI if you really want to. Here's a screenshot yes. that, of the line chart. So it looks mm -hmm. pretty cool with the date and the battery monitor on top. Um, 320 by 240 or 400 by 240 16-bit pixels, which is then pixel doubled, upscaling to full HDMI. He's dubbing as a smoker. He can get an air quality sensor to see how bad he can make the air. Mm. And uh, 6K. I think it goes up to 500 yeah. when yeah. you blow smoke at it. Yeah, 6K is what you're filming the time lapses, though you're using a different yeah. camera. Than it's a Canon. DSLR camera, yeah. Yeah, Canon. That's and... why I get stringing on the prints. And yeah. There's no nothing I can do about the settings because I have I do a long shutter speed on it because it's a low light in that room. Um, so it's, I think it's like a 20th or what is it? 200th of a second. So it, when you take the picture, it, it takes a while for that, for the sensor to build up all that light. And that's why mm -hmm. the, the nozzle parked away takes so long because it's waiting for the camera. And then as it's waiting for the camera, it's slowly oozing. Yeah. There's nothing I can do about that unless I get like way more lights in there so I can increase the, uh, shutter speed on it. Yeah. Yeah. That, and you're using Octoprint to handle uh, the G code to like, hey, go park the, the thing to trigger the time lapse. Because mm -hmm. that's literally what's triggering the time lapse is when the the printer head parks. Yeah, it's I using a read switch to trigger a, a you know, inner velometer remote uh, mm -hmm. that's plugged into the camera, the DSLR camera. And the I DSLR camera running. is powered through the wall. It's plugged in through a wall adapter. So the, there's no battery issues with it. Um, I'm going to do a whole. I'm, yeah, we're gonna do a video on it. We're finally gonna do a video on it because uh, the what is it the contact yeah, switch so that is on the shop right now. Yeah, we're gonna use this to trigger our time lapses here. Yeah, because right now instead of using a read switch, we're gonna use this guy. So a photo, a reflective photo interrupter sensor. Mm -hmm. So this will uh, essentially the the printer head will get close to this, and this is what will trigger. Our, uh, our time lapse of the remote yeah. on the on the camera and it'll take yeah. a photo one photo every layer so yeah. that's how it's working and you take all those photos that are 5k 6k images you bring them into premiere adobe premiere and you no, stitch them after together effects. no it's an after effects <laughs> oh you use after effects okay I use after effects and then i gotta do a bunch of um curves for yeah. The ramping up and slowing down of the you time can lapse. zoom in so, and zoom, zoom out into the canvas and then, because it's all I digital. Can't believe it's, you know, it's twenty twenty four, and you have yes. to make your own S curves for all the animations. Like you <laughs> go in there and do like an ease on a t on a keyframe, and it does like the most ugliest freaking graph. Really, imagine It's like why aren't you guys using you AI to draw an S a smooth S curve for each freaking keyframe? It's 2024. What are we paying you guys for? Like, seriously? <laughs> oh. They just turned into an Adobe. I'm just mad right? because it takes so <laughs> much work to yeah. zoom the camera in for all these keyframes for the time lapses. That's funny. <laughs> and that is time lapse time lapse chat. Yeah. We got a question <laughs> here on guide on it. Okay, yeah, there's a project coming. We still got a prototype it. There's a question in from Twitter. Yeah, Oren yeah. is asking, how well does it handle Analog si signals uh, can handle thermocouplers. Any chance it could connect to a lab jack DAC? I'm not sure about the lab jack DAC, uh, but analog signals, yeah, we have. Uh, I so think for the, the full monitor is full monitor DS DS seventeen. No, I remember the DS name. Eighteen seventeen. There you go. This one. Yes. Yeah, this is a uh, analog. Uh, oh no, it's digital. Never mind. <laughs> is this different? No, that's the one I'm using in the pool. Oh, okay. Well, apparently it's digital, but I'm sure analog stuff will work just fine. So we got that version, then we got yeah, like so uh, this. This goes into the pool and and checks the water temperature. That's it's waterproof. 
with some caveats. You might want to add some hot glue, <laughs> Pedro. Yeah, I know this water is seeping into where the uh, heat heat shrink is. On yeah, the right both here. Of that. Yeah, on the that's funny. Where the metal part is, and then right where the uh, cable is. Yeah, yeah. Set glue around that. Yeah, you're not supposed to submerge all of it. I think you're supposed to stop around here, maybe. Oh. So what, you submerged the whole cable? Oh, like, yeah. 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 Well, if you want to submerge the whole cable, make sure you add some hot glue or something else to insulate it. Because I think you're only supposed to expose the metal part to the water. Oh. Yeah. Now I'm trying to figure out how to do that. We have yeah. a, a part that you print that floats. So oh, like a buoy? That'd be funny. Yeah, like a little buoy yeah, for it. A little buoy like for it. Buoy. Yeah, it's not really that. Do you want to get it in the water so that you can get a better reading now? You don't just want mm -hmm. the surface of the water. Hmm. Anyway, that's the, uh, that's the question. That's the answer. That's the sensor we're using. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I figure a lot of anybody who has a pool, you want to have a, a wireless way to check the temperature of the pool without having to like go outside and go check it. So. Yeah, it's still cold. Seventy-one. Your pool's still cold. <laughs> oh yeah, we can't go in it yet. And I don't want to turn the heater on because it's so expensive to heat that pool up. Yeah, it is. It's a big pool. Yeah, we're looking at the because we don't know what the specs of it or anything. We're like, why does it take so long? Oh, it's the biggest pool in the neighborhood. That's why. <laughs> yeah, a lot of water in there. All right, we're getting some more uh, chatter. From DJ Devin. Here's what uh, the new U the new layout looks like. Okay. Yeah, I was looking at it on my mobile phone. It looks different on there too. And then, yep, it's all done in After Effects. Ah, clear silicone is a good recommendation for uh, a, mm. a better waterproof solution than hot glue. So it's oh. kitchen bathroom silicone. Not caulking, but I guess some sort of silicone. Uh, all right. I think it might be. Makes no. sense. It's what we use on hand, hand, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So, uh, what's left for this? Uh, just doing the video, getting all the hero shots for it. Um, mm. The code is, I think. Yeah, it's um, up on yes. GitHub right now. If you guys want to download it and check it out. Mm -hmm. That's but all uh, good. Yeah, we're video next week. Mm -hmm. This should be able to work with the whippersnapper components. We're literally just adding the feeds that are created by that into the um, Arduino code that uh, Liz cooked up for this to work. Yeah. And what else? Yeah. Um, we'll release all the parts for all this uh, next week. Finalizing yeah. all of the. I think all the parts are done. Yeah. I think the only other thing I wanted to add, maybe, but maybe it's not required because you can totally poke it with like a pencil or something. Um, the built-in like a uh, little button to hit the the boot select and the um, reset button on here. Uh, but yeah. as it is, like if you really needed to, you can yeah. poke it. In. Okay. And you wouldn't be able to access it if access it if you had Stemma um, boards on there anyway. But mm -hmm. I don't know if it's worth. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. This is your call. I haven't needed to. Uh, I found go myself in using the, um, a loader, especially since it's an Arduino project. Mm -hmm. the reset makes more sense when you can uh, mm. circuit yeah. by them. All right, that is the project. Any more questions on it? We'll get to them. But for now, we're gonna do more prototyping. Yeah. What am I working on? I, I mean, see it in the back. Yeah, I'm doing a prop maker RP twenty forty project. This was a, a, a request from my nephew, Gavin, Pedro, your son. <laughs> uh, this is a prop from Gravity Falls, the, uh, the TV show, the cartoon. And in Gravity Falls, they have this, uh, this prop called the memory gun, which wipes memories. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of a fun um, shape. It's got like this kind of mid-century space vibe. It's got an OLED display here. We got a rotary encoder here. So the rotary encoder, what are you doing? I'm trying to make you full screen. <laughs> there you go. There we go. All right, I just turned it on. Uh, there's an OLED screen. The prop maker RP2040 is right here. Um, we have an LED filament. Uh, so an LED noodle here. It's blue. Here's it turning on. 
It's got a just a little push button here to trigger it to turn on the LED. It uh, plays different sound effects. We have a speaker, the mini oval speaker right here inside the the body, and then what else am I missing? It's got a 2200 milliamp battery in the handle here. Um, we this is just a prototype. I'm gonna print it in, in like a gold and a brass kind of brown color, but uh, just getting all the parts kind of fitted right now. Um, these are fake buttons. They don't really do anything. There's supposed to be an LED there, but I kind of opted to not have it because there's already a lot of parts in it. But it's it's pretty modular. You can take the top off here, and then this piece comes off. It has a snap fit dually, and then there's the feather with the, the screw block terminals. It just makes connecting everything to it so much easier. So LED noodle connects to the 5 volts, and there's no NeoPixels in here, but we do have a NeoPixel port if you wanted to add NeoPixels to it. Nice. Um, that looks so good. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty. It looks pretty cool. I like the the shape of it a lot. It's kind of mm -hmm. based around this like kind of cylinder, and then it's supposed yeah. to have this giant knob. So the idea is that we want to make it so that you have a list of sound effects, audio files that show mm -hmm. up here, and then you'll be able to uh, kind of navigate and then click to uh, select that, mm -hmm. and then uh, you'll have a different audio uh, sound effect playing out. So that's. I've been wanting to do some sort of Edison bulb thing. These are plastic um, little oh. Christmas ornaments that you can purchase on Amazon. And it has a built-in uh, thread, so it just threads in there. And it looks really cool. Very cool. Everything prints without any supports because there's a lot of pieces. Um, yeah, I think it's a pretty cool gift for uh, for Gavin. Yeah. Oh, am I gonna make two of them now? Dang it! <laughs> yeah, so the kids will have uh, like a, a yeah. little wipe in their memories. This is weird. It almost looks like a little, like a little um, bottle or something, <laughs> like a bottle thing. I have a bottom cap okay. too that'll you know showcase the uh, or it'll expose the oh, USB yeah. charging the battery. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. These are just sound effects that I ripped from our Loki Time Baton project. Mm. So I'll probably come up with some other sound effects, but uh, yeah. it's kind of cool to have a, an OLED display and then a rotary encoder to mm -hmm. uh, change what's on the OLED display. So it's going to be cool. It's all done in CircuitPython, of course, uh, with help from Liz. And uh, that's pretty much it. Just another cool uh, prop cool. maker project. So that's it. Um, I'll show you. Uh, what it looks like in the TV show to give you an idea of uh, what it's like. Just type in Gravity Falls. Gravity Falls memory gun. I think the reason I brought it up too, and with Gavin, was because they're releasing a book. Yeah, there's a new book coming out, a new journal, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. um, so that made me think, oh, they're like, ramping this up. Is there you know, another season they're working on? Oh, that looks nice. Oh. Yeah, I was going to say that. Treasure box. Yeah, yeah there's a cool treasure box. Oh, I, I'm missing a piece here. I'm actually going to cut this out of acrylic. It's called the Blaster Shield. Oh. Here it is. There's like a sketch of it. Uh, actually, Gavin has the Journal 3. And in the Journal 3 it, yeah. book, it, it has like the blueprint of like oh, cool. the memory yeah. gun. And like the shield is, is like this acrylic piece. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cut it out of acrylic here. You'll be able to 3D print it, of course, but I think it'd be cool to kind of have an acrylic uh, shield. Yeah. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's uh, that's it there. Gravity gun. Super oh, cool. and I have some more floral details on the handle that I'm going to print out. OK, I see you. Yeah, and I can see the little floral thing. Yeah. They have a kind of a bigger yeah. dial, and it was kind of hard to get the handle to fit, but also have you know, like, yeah, the there's always compromises. Off. Yeah. Um, so I ended up making it a little bit smaller and I, I extended this a little bit bigger. So I just, there's some design choices mm -hmm. I wanted to make. Um, the canister is kind of cool. This is where like the memories are supposed to be stored. This, this thing, you're supposed mm -hmm. to be able to like pop out the memories, but it's funny that the dev board is in there and it has flash memory. So I don't know. It's kind of <laughs> cool. But yeah, it's perfect. The point of this prop in the show is like, the secret society uses this memory gun to wipe out anyone who sees things they aren't supposed to see, which I don't know if it's ethical, but here's like make up its memories and they all get stored. So it like, not only does it wipe your memory, it stores the memory and you can play it back. 
which is kind of a cool concept. Um, I don't remember any of that. Well, but yeah. Then, so again, I only remember him putting on the like the finale when they're fighting Bill Cipher. Right. Yeah, with Cipher. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. I think it's a cool, uh, cool prop. I really like the look of it. It was fun modeling it too. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I yeah. Like the couple, not a lot of folks have made it like like as a prop. Like here's a couple of ones like made out of cardboard oh, okay. and stuff. Huh. But I like that ours is so. <clears throat> Like you know, real electronics and stuff. Yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, on it. Um, Taith was uh, saying that um, there's an LED noodle in a drinking straw. <laughs> no, it's three printed. No, it's a three printed holder. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, there's. Let me get rid of that and then show the thing again. Yeah. Yeah, the LED noodle. Um, is is press fitted into this into this uh, translucent thing, so you can see it there. Yeah, yeah. It, it it's perfectly sized too. Like the the length of the noodle is three hundred millimeters, and that was a perfect. Oh, really? so it, oh, wow. Everything just matched out perfect. Like the size hey. of this thing. This isn't glass. This is plastic. As you can see, I can flex it. And uh, it's, it worked out really well. I'm, like I said, I wanted to make a light bulb kind of mm -hmm. Edison style light bulb, and now it's like a cool prop. Yeah. So shout out to Gravity Falls for designing a cool prop, and shout out to Gavin, of course, uh, for suggesting this as a thing. At first, I was like, I don't know, that's going to be kind of hard to do, but I'm glad we uh, we stuck with it. Now we have this super cool prop. Um, the last time we made like a, a handheld blaster was many many years ago. And it wasn't Circuit Python. I think it was with like an old, um, was it a trinket or something? I forget what it was. The the ray gun. Yeah. Yeah, it was a trinket. Pull it up. The very first trinket. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. It didn't have like it was it was such a pain to to wire up. Everything needed to be wired up. A lot of this just kind of gets connected via STEMIQT. Yeah, here it is on uh, Learn. You can see the various Lucio Blaster. Oh, yeah, remember the ultrasonic ruler? <laughs> cool. Uh, here it is, ray gun. Yeah, and the model wasn't exactly the my favorite thing, too. There's a lot of kind of post-processing I did on it. Nowadays, mm -hmm. you have filament that's mm -hmm. glittery and shiny, and this was like spray paint and sanded down. But yeah, it had two dev boards. It had the sound effects board, and then the the is it Itsy Bitsy? I think it's an or Trinket Pro. Yeah, and uh, that handled the uh, the NeoPixel animations, but the sound board just did the sounds. It was it was a very complicated build. Look at the wiring diagram. It's gnarly. You need you needed to have a separate board for the battery charging. Mm hmm. It was, it was just a lot going on there. It had a laser on it, too? It had yeah. a laser diode? Like, yeah, a bunch of stuff on it. Uh, not a lot of people built it, I think. I don't I really have a good image. Couple, I think, uh, was that one teacher? One of the teachers. Oh, Design Makes Teach? Yeah. Yeah. He made one. There it is. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Um, it, I think it was from, like, Fallout or something. I think it was inspired by Fallout. B, I think so. Right. I think mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I designed it in one, two, three D. Um and uh I can't remember the date. It'll say on here when this was originally published. Uh twenty fourteen. So ten years ago. Wow. A decade ago. <laughs> so I'm really happy to finally do another one that uh that's pretty cool. Why we're redoing a lot of projects. <laughs> yeah, and it's a different shape, completely different design. Yeah. It doesn't have a laser and all this, hey, this is crazy stuff. It's going to be in Circuit Python on Arduino. Yeah, and uh, the code will be completely changeable. You can mm -hmm. swap out the the uh, the audio files easily, and it's all in just one board instead of like three. So that's a little background of our ray guns and props and we've, how, how far we've come as a <laughs> company and people. <laughs> what? Uh, no, I'm just looking at and in the Slack Raspberry Pi releases a 15-inch monitor display. 
Sorry, sidetrack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <chat. laughs> oh, oh okay. Fallout, Fallout, Fallout. Not, um, oh no, that is what you said, Fallout. Yeah, Fallout video game series, which I'm super excited for tomorrow. Be, I'm going yeah. to watch I'm it. I'm not the show. biggest fan of it, but I got to watch it for work now. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I really want to make a Pip Boy, a new version. We did a Pip Boy in like 2015 when Fallout 3 or Fallout 4 came out. Yes. But yeah, I'm excited for that TV show. Mm -hmm. Now it looks good. It's always yeah. refreshing when the actual creators are yeah. working on the show. Yeah, they're, they're behind the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, DJ Devin found it. There it is. It's the Fallout Alien Blaster. Most overpowered handgun in Fallout. It's a hidden item that you have to find. Yes, it is. And it, and it shoots a little spark. That. Right? Do I remember that correctly? It's just a little spark that it shoots out. And it's like super powerful. Or am I thinking of something I'm else? I'm not sure. I'm thinking of uh, not Duke Nukem, the other one. That's funny. Yes, so, there's a TV show. It starts tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. It's Amazon, uh, Prime? Amazon Prime. So if you're not subscribed, maybe check it out. Uh, It'll be fun. It's green goo that does uh, this wow, integrates man. everything. That's funny. Kind of yeah, movie. yeah. Thanks for reminding me. I actually haven't really played the Fallout games. Um, I watched it, like other people played. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's what it was inspired by. And uh, ZC Gavin is saying, "I looked at the older ray gun and ran away." <laughs> Very pleased. When the prop maker RP2040 arrived, much easier build. I used it for my Peter Quill <laughs> wad blaster. That's it cool. is a build, man. That's yeah. how it used to be back in the day. Yeah, back in my day, we had to wire everything up. God. And use two different dev boards. <laughs> yep. All right, cool. Sorry for the air. I'm just catching up on things. Yeah, yeah, it is definitely the best board. It's, it's so good. Yeah, love it. Yeah, and it's like almost over featured. Like the accelerometer isn't being used. Oh, sure yeah. The accelerometer for something, maybe. I don't know. But like reloading when you want to reload it or something. Kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Eugene Devin played uh, Fallout 3 like five times, hundreds of hours. Fallout 3 is favorite of all of them, but it crashes because of memory. <laughs> funny. Yeah, I think I started watching when it was uh, Fallout 4. Oh, I couldn't hear you. What were you saying? Sorry, I was trying to queue up the next thing. Okay, all right. Off from uh, prototyping cool ray guns to uh, articulating purple worms. Good segue. Yes. <laughs> So this week's community makes is this super cool articulated worm. In the comments, it says it's supposed to be from Super Mega Worm, that one video game. Oh, I love that video game. Right? It looks just like it. It is Super Mega Worm. Yeah. So fully articulated, print in place, um, has all these crazy teeth. And this print is so sharp. Like all of the full screen, my little shot here. Yeah, this dragging over to full screen stuff is not working for me. Uh, you, you need to kind of change this thing first, and then we can go solo layout. There you go. Yeah, so uh, super stringy, as you saw in the video, because of all of the little points on top here. So it comes out good once you clean it up. But these little side ones, that's where all of the like sharp ones are. Uh, it's because of the way that the overhang prints. It's literally just one layer that is acting as a blade. That's a good way to make a sharp print. Yeah. <laughs> Not make spikes, just make like an overhang on the spike like that. Very cool. So I got to clean all this up because the kids want to play with it. But oh, that's funny. It's a nice 3D uh, print in place uh, worm. Uh, yes. Nice amount of detail on the whole thing, all the little teeth. Yeah, it prints pretty cool. Yeah. Like yep, here it goes. All right, so is this so, fill color changing filament, or did you print it yeah, again? So this is the thermal uh, PLA. So when, when it gets hot, it's pink. And I was trying to demonstrate this to uh, Declan. But of course, it's not working fast enough for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe like hot water. 
you the hot water would definitely work, yeah. 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 It would flow this better in the summer. <laughs> so, yeah, there is thermal color changing filament out there. It's I, didn't want to know, I didn't want to note that because I didn't demonstrate that. But yeah, but, I should have had it hmm. hot because it has like a cool gradient look when oh, yeah. um, like I'm well, grabbing the top part or whatever. Well, it's printing. It's hot. So that's why it's pink. Mm -hmm. But it is the same model because as it cools down, it turns purple. Yeah. And it, it kind of failed. One of the pieces yeah, popped itself, off but though. caught itself. Mm -hmm. You can see all the string here because, you know, the, the printer is parking. So the printer, you know, the G code tells it to kind of chill out for a little bit while it's taking that photo. Mm -hmm. um, but if it didn't have that G code in Octoprint, you would not see it because the bed's moving back and forth and the camera wouldn't yeah. know when the thing is parked. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of why we have to do it this way. Yeah. But hey, good good model. Let me go to the website. Um, this is the video game Super Mega Worm. Highly yes. recommend it. It's a really fun game. So fun. <laughs> I played a lot. I played it a lot, rather. I haven't mm -hmm. played it, but it's a super fun game. That's what it's modeled off of. It's like an eight bit. It's supposed to look like as if it was like a Super Nintendo game, but you can play it on. I wonder what what platform. I'm not sure what platforms, but I played it on my Mac. And then switching over to the Thingiverse. Purple Worm Articulated by MZ4250. And no supports needed. Brim doesn't hurt. They got a Patreon if you want to check out some more of their stuff. Or you can support them on Printables Club. Patreons have access to all their files in one place. Request board. As well as commercial options. Check it out. And uh, there's the model. Here's their photo of it. it. Looks like they painted it a little bit. Yeah, I should have added those details, the mm -hmm. teeth on points there. But man, so it's Miguel, so. Miguel is a designer, big Dungeons and Dragons fan. So you can check out their work. Lots of miniatures here from them. So it's cool to see an articulating print as well. There it is. And it has a couple of makes as well, two makes. Wow, look at these makes. I like the rainbow one. Yeah, let me go back. Where's the rainbow? There it is. I wonder if they scaled it up. Looks a little bit bigger, right? Uh, I actually scaled mine down. Okay, there. that's why. Because this is, looks bigger than yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it still took like 10 hours. <laughs> right, because it's yeah, taking a, a second delay after every layer. Mm -hmm. Very cool. If you want to make your own Super Mega Worm, <laughs> free download. It's uh, not working. <laughs> I swear it's thermal PLA. Yeah, right. Come on. Rub your hands together. Nothing. And because of all heat gun and, and blow, blow it on the heat gun. Oh, uh, that, that would totally work, yeah. Yeah. Get that hot plate, the new Adafruit hot plate that we stocked. Check that out. I'm sure it has to like be a big swing of temperature. Nothing. No. Nothing. <laughs> that's, why I didn't, that's why I didn't put it in the description. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Is it harder on the nozzles? The special filament? Any idea um, if the coaching filament is like that? I don't. I don't think so. I think the abrasive stuff is when you come come into glitter and composites like wood. Um, copper, bronze, those metal yes, filaments. The metal ones. Those are abrasive to the nozzle. And uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Hot or lukewarm cup of coffee. No, right? my coffee is cold. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, exactly. So DJ Devin is, is realizing that uh, yes, taking time lapse right. takes every print much life because you sac your sacrifices are appreciated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and sometimes they're right there. There. Sacro sacrificial prints when they and fail. When it fails, <laughs> it's like you start over and mm -hmm. or you print it and it doesn't look good in the time lapse at all. <laughs> you like run it at a time, like no. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, try to find a mixture of free STLs and some store bought, not store bought, but like you know, paid for models because we want to yeah. support the artist and it's a good business venture. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. We got a couple of more community makes, I believe. Yep. We are back at it with some community makes. 
kicking off with an Epcot Spaceship Earth make posted up by Ryan. They uh, got their parts printed and they have their own um, these little diffusers for the middle section, which has been historically hard because you have to like hot glue them in place. That was the hardest part of this build. Yeah. So they got their own little uh, diffuser yeah. caps in the middle there. A little bit of a gap there, but I'm sure you can sand those down or resize them. Okay. Excellent post-processing. I think they use some uh, aluminum paint or something on it. Oh. Looks super cool. Yeah. that This shot right here looks really, really fantastic. Um, I don't think they sanded it because you can kind of see some layer lines, but that's just kind of adds some texture, in my opinion, mm -hmm. to it. It says, I made two projects. The first one, uh, not painted, but I put it together using the original instructions included in the lighting kit. The second one is painted an aluminum color, also made clips uh, to glue the lights uh, uh, to that, so it made it much simpler putting it together. Also used a cheaper set of lights. The Briz Labs, $36. I already had them on hand, so very nice. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, Drake is asking, uh, can you share your file for those clips? Yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. Very nice. Shout out to Ryan for posting up their make. Very cool. Epcot Spaceship Earth replica. After that, we have a macro pad stand. This was a fun one. This was posted up by Local Voltaic on Thingiverse. This is a print and place um, stand designed for the macro pad, the 84 macro pad. Um, it has like a little kickstand kind of thing. You can use that to kind of prop your, your macro pad up. So they made it and they posted it on Thingiverse. Um, a couple of things. Black PLA. Pretty cool. And then the last one to round it off, uh, Meow, Meow Shrew, Shoe, <laughs> Meow Shoe, uh, posted up their make of the, uh, the heat set insert rig. So they printed out their parts and they got it all assembled. They have their own base as well. And I, I'm not sure if they customize it. Let me read the. I printed and assembled using a remix base, but the uh, rolling assembly had a bit of play and wobbles. Oh. Yeah, the tolerances are always a little tricky with the uh, yeah the plate thing. Yep, <clears throat> but a lot of folks have remixed it, and the STL files are out there if you want to tighten it up. I think someone made a, an adjustable one. Um, this project just keeps continuing to get remixes and makes, and. Um, I don't know when did I post this thing a while ago. <laughs> it is like every week. Yeah, and and nowadays you, you could just buy one on Amazon if you want like oh. a fully metal one. I think for like a hundred bucks or maybe fifty bucks. I forget. But yeah. But whatever folks have, if folks have it on hand. It's a fun little project to put together. Yep. And that is the community makes. Shout out to everybody for posting your makes. People are back from their spring. Hey. Because the last two weeks, we didn't have any community makes. Um, don't forget, if you want to pick up anything in the Adafruit shop today, this morning, you get 10% off your order with coupon code PCODVI. And that is good for the next 24 hours. Tonight is show and tell and ask an engineer. It's going to be special guest host. Uh, John Park. John Park will be hosting tonight's show and tell. We invite you to come on. It's at 7.30 p.m. Come on maybe 10 minutes earlier in the Discord chat room where uh, JP will post the invite link for folks uh, to come in and hang out and check all their camera and audio. And then at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Ask an Engineer with Mr. and Mrs. Lady Ada. Full hour of open source hardware news, new products, top secrets, high on MPI, and more. Tomorrow is Thursday, Fallout Day, but also John Park's workshop. <laughs> Tune into John Park's workshop at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Deep dives with Tim or Scott at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Deep dives, live streams with some core development of CircuitPython and beyond. And then Mondays is CircuitPython meetings with the folks community in the core devs. Uh, Tuesdays, JP's product pick of the week at 4 p.m. Eastern time. And then every Wednesday, we're back to our show 
3D Hangouts. The longest running show. <laughs> Not really, but that's that's what we say. Great All right, everybody, thank you so much. Um, I don't think I'm going to come on show and tell. I think I'll wait till next week. Yeah, this isn't done yet. <clears throat> right. Um, yeah. Just as a programming note, we'll be off the 24th of April, and we'll keep letting folks know. But the 24th, we're taking off. We're going to have a little spring break. Just taking the week off. But we'll be back that following week, which will be May 1st, running into summertime. And then we'll have we'll, we'll be off in June at some point. Mm. We'll have folks now. <laughs> but that's the plans. I'll be down in Florida. So if anyone wants yeah. to say hi, we'll be around. All right. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. This has been an Adafruit production. We'll be back next week with a learn guide and video for the Pico DVI project. But until then, remember to make a, a great, great day. day. Bye, See you folks. next week.